With a devastating injury that ended his football career, this all-American self-made entrepreneur has built a business empire that generates over $20 million a year. How did he do it? A simple mindset that you can use too. You don't wait till you have all the pieces to start building the thing. You use what you have to do what you can. Sacrifice is not only important, it is a part of success. It's just you and that dream, that idea. Your life is not over, that life is over. Allow yourself to fail. See where you fell short. Figure out why. Try again. And this is very important in any line of business. There's a lot of people sitting on great ideas. Yeah. They believe in them. Yeah. But what's stopping them is they don't have money. All right, Jeremy, tell our audience uh, who you are, what you do, and a little bit about the businesses that you're involved in. My name is Jeremy Hills. Uh, originally from Houston, Texas. I went to the University of Texas, played some good football there. We had a, sure. a lot of good times. This is our second location for Collective, which is a social performance club that I believe, uh, a little biasly, is the first of its kind. The other aspect that makes it to where the adult doesn't want to leave is we have co-working as well. So from it have come opportunities that have been like to invest in and become a part of. Kane brand, the only recovery shoe I would ever suggest anybody wears. We'll get into that. 10,000 uh, apparel brand Oxfit, which is uh, Connected Fitness. And then we purchased the Texas Ranchers this year, the pickleball team, the official wow. pickleball team. We got involved with uh, National Cycling League, NCL, was one of the original investors there. Opening As You Are, which is a, a high-end fashion boutique, as well as a wine bar. Which we'll go check out. Yeah, we'll on. go check that out. So you've we'll got go over eight businesses, it sounds like, right? Yeah, like man. Seven, listen, eight plus. Uh, listen, better be working. You either got one that, that feeds you good or you, or you better find some food elsewhere. All right, so this place has a lot that our audience would love to see. Unfortunately, we can't film everywhere. There's people actively working out and doing what they need to do. Yeah. But take us to the lounge. I think that was a great place to see and, and continue the conversation. Let's go to the lounge. Jeremy, you are a Texan through and through. Through and through. That's pretty clear. Yeah. Share with our audience a little bit about your upbringing and some of the experiences that shaped your entrepreneurial spirit as we see it today. So I, I didn't grow up with much. I, I grew up in, in government housing in the south side of Houston. Since we don't have money, uh, what do we have? And then again, how can we get done what we're trying to get done with what we do have? And, and then watching my mother, watching her grew up in a single parent household and, and watching her get creative with, with paying the rent every month. You have to work through things and you have to get creative with your saw. I got a chance to work that muscle early on and often. As we know, it takes money to make money, but did you know that you can raise all the capital you need by following these three bullet points? So stick around so that you can find out how you can put them to use in your business. So you've got a full-on medical staff here Full all the time? Full-on medical staff, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. cool, dude. Staff. All right, aside from getting ripped enough to play in the NFL, yeah. what does being a member of the collective entail? How many members do you have and what does it cost? What can you share with us? Absolutely. Being a member here entails a lot of things. First, we start with our medical side. We have concierge medicine. We do blood work here. We have physical therapists, chiropractors, massage therapists. We do vitamin pushes, IVs. I mean, from the recovery side, we have cold plunges, saunas, uh, infrared saunas, yoga, Pilates, personal training, group classes. We do a lot of those things. And then we have like business development things that we do as well. We do monthly happy hours with Soho House. Uh, mm -hmm. Try to get our members to be able to really take advantage of that social component, mm -hmm. and interact with each other outside Network, of our space. Yep. We do a, a ton of different things that are outside of the scope of going to the gym. And what does it cost, if you may share? If I walked in the door and said, Jeremy, I want to be part of this club, uh, what are we looking at? Well, Paul, if you walked in the door, we would tell you that you need to apply for a membership. Mm -hmm. Then um, you would go through a tour and we'll explain uh, the services to you and everything that we offer, who we are. Through the actual uh, application process, we get a feel for who you are. Mm -hmm. you, know, you want to make sure that it's a good fit. Right. Doing our best to, to play uh, matchmaker, right? And then it's uh, four ninety nine a month, a thousand dollar initiation. And a good thing about that is, is like a, a good chunk of that initiation we put towards a credit that we want you to have to now find your path at Collective. Telling a great story is essential to building a successful business, and no one knows better than a great storyteller. So keep watching as Jeremy shares a little bit more insight into what he's learned about the storytelling technique. I think one thing you really have to accept along this journey is that it's not always sweet. 72% of all entrepreneurs deal with some type of mental health issue. You've got two of the collective locations. Yeah. Right now we're at the north. Let's go check out the south. Let's do it. All right. All Thank right. you, Jeremy. All right, here we are. Here we are. Collective hey, Soco. 
So your family has been in football all their life. It's Absolutely. in your blood. That's very clear. Texas, right? Uh, yeah. Especially. But you've faced this career-ending injury in college. The question that I have that our audience want to know is, how did you overcome that adversity, that that showstopper in a way? Like, right. this is over. Like, yeah, no, football was, was the biggest part of my identity, and I didn't realize that until it was gone. So what can we do? Don't worry about the end. Lock into right now. It's just you and that dream, that idea, uh, the thing that you want to accomplish, and you have to dedicate yourself to that. Embrace that feeling of like, where does this go? I'm unsure. I'm, uh, there's no real support. It can really break you if you're allowed to, but that's success, making sure that you are working. I had to figure out, okay, who am I? So you go on this like, little bit of a life journey. I got a lot closer in my, in my faith than I was before. And then I started focusing on the work and asked myself a single question. And it's just like, all right, one dream has, has died. What is my dream? Mm -hmm. The fun that I still had was in the actual hardship of physical training. Mm -hmm. And so I started, all right, I'm interested in training. What do those careers look like? If you can just start asking yourself questions. That's what we're looking and for, And not yeah. stop digging until you get those answers, which usually come with more questions. Before you look up, you're going in a direction. And as I started going down the direction that I went down, it's worked out for me. So if somebody watching us right now, uh, Jeremy, is in the spot where you were after that injury, yeah. right? And they're like, dude, this is over. My life's over. What do you tell them in a the nutshell? Somebody in that spot, I say, your life is not over, that life is over. Well and, and that's how you be like honest with yourself. If you think that thing is done, it's probably done. But that's not your life, that's a part of your life. And I think perspective will shift the mindset. And then when a mindset shift, now all of a sudden you're starting to work towards something. We're focused on what the next thing is. Realizing that who we are is not what we do. With all the struggles that you faced from childhood all the way to this point, what do you think is the relationship between sacrifice and success? Talk to us about that. Yeah, that's a really good one. If you're unwilling to sacrifice, if you're unwilling to work, if you're unwilling to do the things that success requires, then you are undeserving of success. Sacrifice is not only important, it is a part of success. They're tied together. Can you share with us whatever you're comfortable as far as just the revenue uh, numbers for the collective? Yeah. I'm curious if, I know it's not fair to compare it to the traditional uh, gym model, but just whatever, whatever makes sense for us to know. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So we built two clubs 11 months apart, acquired a practice in the middle of that, and we're building our third club now. You are? So, um, Profit is gonna look different because we continue right. to reinvest into our business. Our top line rev is just south of, of eight mil annually. Gross revenue. Yeah. What do you, I mean, as a business owner with the partners involved, what's a healthy expectation to take home? It's different for us because we, we're truly invested in collective. We, you wanna, we, you wanna we, scale. Yeah, we pay ourselves uh, a salary and that's all. Me and Devin are by far and large low on the pole of earnings from collective. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah I would imagine. I mean, you're in that season right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, I'm having so much fun building the thing. <laughs> it's hard to want to cash out right now. You're in the big boy sandbox. Yeah, yeah. Let's, we're not cashing out right now. Not right. now. How much did it cost to get collective off the ground, Jeremy? And then more importantly, how did you get the funds put together? Was it all yeah. you? Was it cash no, partners? No, 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 it's, so it's, it's never all me. What um, can we learn from that process? South of, right south of about two. Two mil? Yeah, to, to really get it going. It's so much that goes into that beginning part the where um, I, I don't know many startup entrepreneurs that have not reached that point of like, I don't know if we're gonna make it to open, especially for us, because we were trying to deliver this experience and this experience costs money. Mm -hmm. And so, but we're trying to like not spend the money because we don't have any money coming in. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a tough situation. The point that I want to highlight too, just to piggyback of what you're saying is like, there's a lot of people sitting on great ideas. Yeah. They believe in them, yeah. but what's stopping them is they don't have money. Absolutely. So they don't do anything, but that's not the case for you. Well, no. Did you ever feel like, man, I don't have any money, therefore no, you, you have a different, kind of way of thinking. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like so, I, I mean, my, my early days probably lend to that, but like I said, you, you work what you do have. Mm -hmm. And what I did have is, at the time, eight years of experience in this city that said that, hey guys, I can draw a crowd in this field. And if you believe in me, I will expand this crowd and make you more money than you're giving me today. The market's ready for this. We're the people to do it because. 
Boom. Boom. I need to, I need a check. I, I need a check because I need to get going. The longer this takes, the longer it takes me to get going. <laughs> that's true. So you gotta be direct sometimes, yeah, right? Yeah, that's that's kind of how that was. But if you don't have that kind of confidence, you probably shouldn't get started. People will see through that. Yeah, you probably yeah. shouldn't get started. Yeah. I'm not gonna believe you if you don't believe you. Guys, thanks for submitting your questions. It's Blitz time with Jeremy. Jeremy, right. first question: What's a lesson you've learned that applies to each of your different businesses? What sets you apart? Continue to do your research continue to refine your offering and allow for ideas different than your own to take shape when necessary. Awesome. What are your thoughts on involving friends and family in business? Ooh, that's tough. Uh, personally, I don't really do it. The person I am in business is somebody that's trying to win. The person that I am at home is somebody that's trying to love. Two different goals, two different me's. All right, are there any other industries you're looking to get into in the future? Oh, absolutely. One that I'm super excited about is the high-end fashion boutique market. And another that I'm excited about that we're getting into is the wine market. So, the wine market? Yeah. Wow, so this we'll, guy's really venturing yeah. out. We'll do those two. And, and uh, I don't know, it may be an opportunity in there to teach at a university. Okay. Who do you think is the most dominant player in the NFL today? Oh, come on. I know. Do I'm this throwing to me. that at you. you go, name you a few. What, name I a few. One. The most dominant player in the NFL today, my guy, Cameron Dicker, the kicker for the <laughs> Los Angeles Chargers. All right, Texas or Cowboys? Easy. H town, baby. All right. If you could have dinner with one athlete, dead or alive, who would it be? Muhammad Ali. Awesome. Who has better Texas barbecue, Austin or Houston? I got to give it to Austin. You I got to give it to Austin. Okay. I gotta right. give it to Austin, Austin yeah. loyal here. What is a common misconception about working out that you want to set the record straight on? People say, how do I work out and get a six pack? You get a six pack by the way you eat. Okay. If the quote, Jeremy Hill story, unquote, was a movie. Who is the playing the lead and what's the title? Ooh, that's a really good one. Michael B. Jordan. And the title is A Rose That Grew From Concrete. That's well said. All right, last one. Have you ever gotten starstruck while working with such high profile athletes? Yes, one time in my career. It is embarrassing. 2014, Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I'm shooting a commercial with Jordan Brand and Charles Woodson is one of the athletes I'm working with that day. This was my childhood. No. And uh, walked in the gym, and he literally he he pauses at one point, and I'm just staring, and he's like, "Well, what do we got?" I like, uh, <laughs> and I had to get back to work. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, more than six million people have created websites with Durable, and it's easy to see why. Durable lets you generate a business website in 30 seconds using their state-of-the-art AI website builder. Now that makes them the fastest professional web design platform on the market. And Durable is more than just a website design tool. It's a comprehensive platform to help you launch and grow your business. You can easily choose your business name, generate a full brand, and get your first customer using their marketing tools. They have built-in SEO, review automation, and Google AdWriter to help drive traffic to your new site. It's free to get started and get new customers or start booking jobs from day one. Whether you're a new entrepreneur or an established business owner who needs a better online presence, Durable gives you everything you need to build your brand, grow revenue, and unlock your business's full potential. Click the link below to set up your free account today and use code UPFLIP30 for a 30% off. What led you ultimately to walk away from the medical device company? That was the second job that you had, yeah, right? Like yeah. what, what did you learn from those experiences there? Honestly speaking, mm -hmm. I wasn't happy. Not happy from a, an aspect of like, am I jumping for joy at work every day? I'm not happy. Like, like it, even the highs don't give me the the feeling that I would want. Right? Was that the was that the reason from just moving on from from that particular yeah, I, job? I was like, I'm gonna take the I'm gonna bet on myself. I'm mm -hmm. gonna take the chance and go after what I want in this life, which I've now realized after 18 months, two years, it's not. A gazillion dollars. Mm -hmm. it, that, that wasn't the goal because I was making more money than I knew what to do with. It's not fulfilling me. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to be fulfilled. So you run eight businesses at this point. What can we take away from you, the man who's doing that and not being burned out? I think that's the thing is that like I don't run eight businesses. I'm involved with them mm -hmm. all and I'm involved with my role in them as I'm trying to help them build, grow, scale, and eventually sell, and and when they do, I'll have a return That's from right, that. Yeah. But um, I think a more accurate statement is I'm working on eight things. I don't run eight businesses. I mean, I'm running the collective alongside my co-founder Devin, but trying to run eight businesses would run me into the ground, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't be no good for my most important job, which is fatherhood. Mm -hmm. like, Amen. Yeah. I'm so, a dad myself, so I, so I you understand. Get it. Yeah. That's my most important job. I'd be no. By the time I got to job number nine, which is the one that requires the most. 
I'd be no damn good. So yeah. I think that what people can learn is lend your talents and skill in the capacity that you can to the things you're interested in. Don't spread yourself there. Mm -hmm. Do not spread yourself there. Yeah, because then nobody's getting the best version of you. So trying to run eight businesses would be way too much for me in my capacity. Absolutely. So there's a period of time in your life where you're just partying, you're drinking. This is post the injury. On the ground, the senior Hills goes in. Jeremy Hill. Yeah, 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 I'm trying uh, to cope. Trying to cope, yeah. trying to find your identity. And you know, you, you're thinking about maybe training and, and you don't have your own dream. Uh, it evolves into that, right? Yeah. At which point does that become a business or you start training? Who made an impact on you? What's Fun the story? So funniest thing, real quick. Um, so I'm working at CarMax yeah. and um, uh, you know, I'm embarrassed, but I'm, I'm meeting people. It's just a revolving door, new people coming in. And as we're having those conversations, people that know me are like, oh, Jeremy, you're here. People that don't know me are like, oh man, you got a, a decent bill. What do you do outside of this? My first couple of clients came from people I sold used cars to. And I didn't have a gym, but I still had relationships. And this is very important in any line of business. But the janitor for the athletic center at UT, he and I had become friends over my time at UT. So I asked him if, when everybody was gone, if he would just leave the back door open for me. No way. So my, my training <laughs> career started illegally at the University of Texas. <laughs> just get do it. For this. Uh, <laughs> it. It started illegally at the University of Texas as my guy, which will remain nameless. And I was able to give my clients an experience unlike anything they had. Like this is so the same cool. facility that Kevin Durant trains out of. So mm -hmm. for a lot of them, they were getting this experience on top of the training. In terms of relationships and business and how that transitions to success, right. what's the lesson out of the story? You don't wait till you have all the pieces to start building the thing. Mm -hmm. You use what you have to do what you can. Even like, if it means propping the door open? And... I don't care what it means. Get started. <laughs> Every castle was built by a crook. Get it started. So they, they say it takes money to make money, but that's easy for people to say who have the disposable income right. or, or cash on hand. Right. You built your original client list by just using your savings and traveled and so on? It was definitely a gamble, but uh, it worked out for me. So I went directly after pro athletes, the most tough group to convince to right. do something different. And then uh, an added aspect of difficulty there is I was so young myself. So I'm going to a pro athlete that's making millions of dollars as a 23 year old, trying to convince them that I'm the person that they should allow to lead their off season training protocols. Now people would entertain it, they would entertain the conversations, but after 16 trips, I had zero guys, right. zero commitments. No like money not left. Not a single one. My first actual pro athlete came because he was just in Austin at the time and needed somewhere to train. When I say it worked out, every single trip I took, every single meeting I had over time, I've worked with all of those guys and still do. So gotcha. it worked out. It was still a dumb plan. What is it about the Jeremy Hills mindset that set you up for success? I call it win the day. Don't be distracted by the past. Don't be enamored with the future. Focus on the small details that make up today and win that. And at first it was something I'd say to get myself going. In. But over the years I realized there's really much more than that. It's a mantra that represents the mindset it takes to consistently do the things necessary to turn dreams into goals and then goals into reality. And then be present enough to call out what the wins are. Mm -hmm. I don't take a meeting without knowing what a win is in this meeting. I was going to say, give us an example of a, of a winning day for you uh, recently. A winning day for me, if, if I have three meetings on the schedule, I don't only need to know what the agenda says we're doing in that meeting. I need to know what a identified win is to me from this meeting. And then I got to keep a scoreboard. Did we get that done or not? Not what was our intent, not how good was our effort. Did we get it done or not? Be willing to be that level of hard on yourself, right? Like stack up the small wins. And then when you look up over time, it'll oh be a boy. big one. Yeah. Oh boy. Take us back to the moment when you had the idea for the collective. Help us understand you know, how that came about. I think it's a combination of two different experiences. 2019, I was actually in Dubai teaching performance training to their high level club football teams out there. The facilities that they had me teaching in were some of the most gorgeous things I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, Dubai does and everything at another level. That was the first idea of like, 
man, this is what top of class looks like. And so I started like actually challenging what I had known as top of class. And then there was a, another experience where I met Devin. I was writing a program that I was selling off to Lifetime Fitness where he was working at the time. And he overheard some of my athletes talking about the collective bargaining agreement for the NFL at the time, which was coming up. Long story short, and as we started having more in-depth conversations, Devin and I, we led to, well, why don't we do it? Why don't we create the place where the professional athlete and the business professional can both coexist in a shared uh, situation that they help each other in? So yeah. th that's where the word collective came about? Uh, collective bargaining agreement. All right. Guys, statistically over 60% of you who watch our channel are not subscribed yet. So do us a huge favor and yourself. Take a second, hit the like, hit the subscribe button so we can continue to bring you the best content from entrepreneurs like Jeremy and more. Thank subscribe. you so much. Subscribe. Subscribe now. A lot of entrepreneurs struggle with imposter syndrome. I think it's mm. kind of part of the journey. So what's your advice for battling imposter syndrome? There's no way I can do this. You know, definitely find out I'm a fraud. I think imposter syndrome is a part of letting you know that you're going the right way. It's a sign on that entrepreneurial journey. It's letting you know you feel this way because you care. Imposter syndrome is real. Every space that you hit is a new space and those same thoughts kind of creep in no matter how much success you have. Do I deserve to be here? Will I be exposed? Am I the right person? Am I the right pick? Only thing you can really do is kind of counteract that with the way that you prepare. I went from no success to what felt like overnight because of the celebrity of others. So there wasn't a gradual climb. It was like nothing, 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 hockey sick. You, you know mm -hmm, what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, so what do you feel inside at that moment? Is, is, in, is in this that moment, you feel fake, like you what? feel like I'm gonna get exposed. Do I deserve to be here? Why are they asking me? Like these are the yep. things that come around that. I follow. Yeah. Um, this is why I'm, I'm heavy on education in your field because that'll help you feel more comfortable combating it. But even when you're, if you've been the most studied and you've learned the things, the doing is the test. And that's the stuff that's hard. That's when the real lessons, uh, they, they have consequences. You know, if I make the wrong step with collective this way, it can impact the business this way. And if I do too many wrong steps in a row, downsizing starts to happen. So there's a phrase, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life, Jeremy. With what you know now, yeah. how would you change or revise that statement? I would revise it and probably say, do what you love well mm -hmm. and, and it won't feel like work all the time. That's what I would say. Okay. But I absolutely love what we do here. And some days do feel like work. Some days are uphill, some days are downhill. That is just the nature of it. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I would even challenge people and say, stop looking for ways to get away from work and just find what you want to work on. In that moment where the NFL career is in your rear view mirror now, mm -hmm. you start taking other jobs. How do those jobs specifically, I want to hone in on those, shape and impact your abilities uh, moving forward and becoming an entrepreneur. Oh, absolutely. Well, CarMax is is, is pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. I, I'm trying to convince people to buy like a used 94 Hyundai. So like if you can convince somebody to spend some money on that, then you can go raise some capital. Yeah, that's kind of how that goes. But um, when small. I worked in the orthopedic medical device sales field, I started looking at training different as I started to understand anatomy in a, in a deeper way. Verbally working with surgeons that were, you know, working on people, operating on people. And the more that I studied and understood that, the more uh, I had the idea that we should change the way that we're looking at training. All right, I've been eagerly waiting to ask you this question, and that is, what are the three bullet points for raising capital? Okay, okay. The first thing is, how big is the problem I'm solving for? You need to identify that. Like, uh, if I'm raising money to do a business, how many people care about this and what's the return on this? How big is the problem I'm solving for? And then secondly, I would say, um, why is your method and your team right for this problem, right? You need to build that story into your deck and into your pitch. They need to understand why they should believe that you are the reason and have the solution to the problem. And then thirdly, whatever investor that you're talking to, do some research on them. Why do they care? Have they invested in things like this in the past? Is this something that they donate money to? Is this a cause that they're already invested in? Do they have any kind of family something that's going on the reason why they would care so deeply about this? Why are they a good strategic partner outside of the capital for the capital? 
So those three things, like how big is the problem you're solving for? Why you and your team? Why are you the right person for it? And then why this investor? Answer those questions. I think you'll have a good start. You have a wait list of yeah. people just waiting to get into the collective club. How did you build such a strong following? Where does that stem from? People are demanding more from my industry. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe there's a lot of places to find it at the moment. I can't think of any, honestly. Right. So um, not just the exchange of value, but I do believe we're delivering on the, the promise of aiding people and becoming their best selves. And this is a place as well for like, it is the place for the entrepreneur. It is the place for the business interaction to happen as to where in traditional kind of gym settings, that's kind of shunned where people, you know, they pop in their headphones, they never ever speak to each right. other. That's we go good out of our way to cultivate experiences for our members to not only get to know each other. And my partner, Devin, I've seen him literally um, walk up and grab somebody and introduce him to somebody else and say, you two need to talk. I've seen business ideas formulate out of here. I've seen people get funded out of here. So I've seen opportunity happen. And uh, this is definitely not just a gym. Not at all. Three letter not word. This is game changer. The, the gym aspect is just the common denominator for all of us saying we're That's interested true. in that. Yeah. That's it. The most important sales skill that you think is crucial to develop as a business owner? I would say leadership, communication, and the ability to admit when you're wrong. The three of those will allow you to exist in a space where you can change course when necessary. Your staff and team feel like the best ideas win and not just like a certain positions. Mm -hmm. And that way you always have everybody working their best towards the thing because they feel like their voice will be heard, which it will. And then uh, communicate, communicate uh, openly when, when things are going right and have the ability to bring people behind closed doors when things are going wrong. Allow for what's best for the business to always take take precedent over your ego. Mm -hmm. And that, the, the more the business grows, that becomes a lot tougher for people. But what Jeremy thinks is best is not always what's best for a collective. So uh, we got a rule around here, and whenever we're stuck on any issue, we say real simply, what's best for a collective? And that's what we do. What are some books you recommend entrepreneurs uh, reading? Four that come to mind. All right. Unreasonable Hospitality, Grit, the Power of Moments, and The Richest Man in Babylon. Which one, can you give us a quick insight on the impact that it made on you? Absolutely. So grit, I believe grit is the single most valuable determining factor for success. Not just how much, but like how far. How far will you go? What is your breaking point? Hmm. What, how bad do you want it? And the way that she basically describes grit as a, as a developable, like a skill mm -hmm. that you can actually develop and get better at and the ways to do so, uh, that, that is a, that's not just a book, that's a piece of like work. Awesome, that's a good one. Guys, that's just a few books that made Jeremy, Jeremy. So if you want the full list of all the books that you should be reading as an entrepreneur and, and growing yourself in your business, Click the link below to check out more details. Jeremy, so throughout this whole interview, it's very clear that you're absolutely an amazing storyteller. So I wanted to follow up and ask you, how, how is that possible? Who taught you? Yeah. What's the secret? Uh, what is it all about? Why is it important? First of all, thank you. I don't know if I'm an amazing storyteller, but I will say that I treat conversations with strangers as if I'm in the living room with my best friends. I treat people as people. I don't respect positions as much as I respect character. And it allows me to level with just about anybody. And, and travel has been a big part of that as well, as I've gotten a chance to see different parts of the world and how they operate has helped me connect. And I believe that uh, you connect through stories and you connect with people that you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So when you kind of stay in that space of like a humble respect in a shared space, between humans, you'll be surprised at uh, just the, the good memories that come from there. That's awesome. I have a network filled with NFL pros, top entrepreneurs. What is your top advice for our viewers for building that network? Put your art into the world. Social media is a free platform. Allow for art to go into that scary space called the internet and travel mm -hmm. where it's gonna travel. And then allow for connection to happen, genuine connection to happen due to genuine interest and then put yourself out there. Make yourself available and then don't try to force it. Yeah. Like let people, people will come let to people see the real you and then allowing for change to organically happen along the path and then I'm probably going in a different direction. But just do it like that. Like be obsessed with right now. 
you don't come from a background of privilege or wealth. No. Right? Not at all. And so you've had a lot of these tough moments that were good moments that shaped who you are today, which is, I think, is a blessing in disguise. Absolutely. For those watching that come from a background of privilege and have money, what do you say to them in terms of how do they gain that perspective? You know, my life today is so much different than it was back in Houston growing up. So mm -hmm. I think about it for my kids. How are we going to give them the, the gift of struggle? And, I like that, um, the gift of struggle. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is, right? Um, mm -hmm. It's being able to flex that muscle of figuring out how to overcome problems, whether it's lack of or something that you want to get accomplished that you just don't have the means to do, like working on uh, overcoming obstacles. Allow yourself to fail. See where you fail short. Figure out why. Try again. Like, just that cycle. Get comfortable with that cycle. When you dedicate yourself to the craft itself, and you look up, you really get to see your dream kind of come to fruition, sometimes like me, 10 years later. And that's okay, it's a part of it. It's not necessarily about perfection so much as it is about progress. Right. And I like if, that. if people are chasing <clears throat> progress and chasing refinement, then they'll allow themselves to be in situations that they're not an expert in. That alone will give you, uh, I'd imagine, uh, some of the same blessings that the gift of poverty given me. What an inspiring story. If you guys are looking to turn your business dreams into reality, you've got to check out this episode where a fitness guru started off by living out of his truck who then built a $200 million a year business. We appreciate you watching and see you next time.